I'm Deborah Hensley, and you're listening to our ongoing series, Good Lives, Good Lives. In this edition, we feature Irma Rosenstein, a social work scholar, humanitarian, social justice advocate, and the first significant organizer of the Bluegrass chapter of the National Conference for Community and Justice. NCCJ was founded in 1927 as the National Conference for Christians and Jews in response to anti-Catholic sentiment being expressed during Al Smith's run for the Democratic nomination. Its founders included prominent social activists such as Jane Addams and U.S. Supreme Court Justice Charles Evans Hughes, who dedicated the organization to bringing diverse people together to address interfaith divisions. Years later, NCCJ expanded its work to include all issues of social justice, including race, class, gender equity, sexual orientation, and the rights of people with different abilities. We are thankful for Irma's tremendous courage, tenacity, and leadership, both nationally and in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. If I wanted to walk with a black person on Main Street, I was told not to ever do that. Not only would they hurt the person who was walking with me, but that I would be not only frowned upon, but perhaps hurt as well. This happened in Lexington, Kentucky, and the newspaper took on the attitude that nothing really was happening. They did not publish pictures. They didn't tell any of the stories that were happening. It was totally foreign to me uh, to see the kind of hate that I think that people were just brought up with that. And if I would describe this to residents here, they would simply deny it and they would tell me that I had misunderstood the entire situation. They just said, these things don't exist here. And so that's really how I uh, got started, I think. I'm Irma Rosenstein. I came to Lexington, Kentucky 60 years ago. And I think that it was just shortly after I arrived here that I started working with um, human relations and somehow immediately got tied up with the National Conference of Christians and Jews. I, I never, it was never a job or, or did I have a title, but I did everything from this house and it's the same house too. I came from New York City, okay. having grown up in, as they call it, a melting pot where our neighbors, you know, were Italian on one side and um, strict Catholics from another group on the other side and I mean all different kinds of people. We, we, we like that. It's what makes us a great country. I had already seen some things in Lexington that upset me very much. I caught on pretty early that this religion thing was very different. Obviously I am Jewish and there were many people who made me aware of the fact that I was. They weren't really a helping community. They didn't understand that you had to help your fellow man. One of the most shocking things to me was our newspaper at that time had a section that they called Colored Notes. I said to many people, what is this thing that says Colored Notes? They said, well, the paper will not publish material about people other than white people. So that was all put under colored notes. That was the best way to cope with it. I just could not believe what was happening. My husband, uh, who is born, was born in Frankfort, Kentucky. And of course we met in New York City. Actually, we met at the starlight roof of the Waldorf Astoria. So we're very, very New York um, born. What kept me here, I really felt that it was fun being married to Irv. Uh, his work was here. I had two children pretty soon, and this was my life. I had never gotten in, I suppose, on the ground floor of anything. It was probably about 1956 or 7, someplace like that, before 1960. And there were just a few people who were 
working with uh, NCCJ at that time. Here I was learning about the possibility of really doing something about some of these incidents that were incipient and truly bothering me. And I didn't know I was going to get in as deeply as I did. I said, oh, well, you know, I'll talk to these people, sure. And I just saw a place that I could just run with it. And that's what I did. And the concept was very simple. It was respecting your fellow man. And it was allowing your fellow man to live his way. It was not imposing your will on your neighbor. And from that point of view, it, this was a tough community. The Phoenix Hotel was throwing people out. They would have them come in and forcibly pick up the person, take them outside and dump them on the concrete sidewalk. This happened in Lexington, Kentucky. The newspaper never had a word about it. I knew that I had to ask one of my colleagues, just a lovely, lovely woman, bright and capable, and a black. And so she came with me to the Phoenix Hotel. We knew that we were taking a chance, but I also felt very, I suppose, you know, I was young and felt very strongly about this. This man who came over, I thought, to take our order, said, what are you doing here? And I said, we came to eat lunch. And he said, well, you can't eat lunch here. I really thought we were going to get lunch. Not that we wanted to eat. It wasn't the eating. It was the courtesy. It was the idea that why shouldn't everybody be respected? Uh, the two of us, we, we talked to him and we asked to see the manager. And we asked, we did, we did all the things that we felt we could do. And then when we were turned down so much and uh, it looked as though we should get out of there, we did. We, we then just got out. It took a lot of persuasion to get them to understand that there was no reason that a person other than a white person could sit at their counters. Uh, it's obviously part of me and part of NCCJ because even in the early beginnings of the organization, we were always very quietly in the background. We were not out there in front, uh, you know, with, with hammers and axes and, you know, breaking down doors and doing things. But persuade is really the proper way to look at it. I suppose we were always negotiators. We believed in compromise way back, just as Henry Clay did. Sitting down with someone, I always felt, if we could just talk about this and get it out there on the table, that these issues would somehow evolve and somehow we could get to the next step without having a violent uh, reaction or having some way that people would really, you know, hate each other. The word hate was never in our vocabulary. I never said to anybody in my life, this is how you should think. I, and I still don't believe in saying that. I'm always saying, let's look at all this together and let's look at all the sides and see what facets we can take from here and take from there and uh, build on. To this very day, when I see an article on the front page with a picture of a black man or woman or family or I read a a Merlene Davis column on the front page of the paper, I do swell up a little bit and say, hallelujah. And it's not the greatest hallelujah because there are still so many parts that can be, need more, uh, you know, fixing as they say. But it's such an improvement from when I came. As we each did what we saw we could do, I think we made a difference. And I think the differences, the increments were, may have been small and they got, you know, a little larger, a little larger. And, you know, eventually my friend and I went back to the Phoenix and sat there and laughed and said, well, this is it. <laughs>